So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use layer effects. And what's really cool about layer effects is that before we could only apply these effects or filters to the instances of movie clips. But now we can apply them to layers, which means that anything that resides inside a layer can have an effect applied to them. So to demonstrate this, I have a graphic symbol that contains a nested animation of a walk cycle. So let's say we want to add a realistic shadow to this character. We can do that through the use of layer effect. So what I'm going to do is right click over the layer containing our animation and I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to drag this layer below the original layer. And let's rename it walk cycle shadow. Okay, so now I'm going to lock the top layer and I'm also going to convert it to outlines just so it's easier to see the layer underneath and what I'm doing. I'm going to select the instance on the stage and grab the free transform tool and I'm going to position the center point down here. And this is just going to allow me to then scale the artwork like this. And maybe even skew it over like this. Now what we want to do is just click on the frame in this layer. And now you'll notice in the properties panel we can apply filters. So using the drop down menu, I'm going to select drop shadow. If I scrub the timeline, you'll notice that this effect is applied to the entire layer. And so for this shadow to look convincing, we're going to need to actually play around with some of these settings. So the first thing we want to do is hide the object. This will actually hide the original artwork and just show us the drop shadow. You might want to apply just a subtle amount of blur. So maybe a value of three will work really well. Strength, if you reduce the amount of strength, will lower the opacity of the shadow itself. And this is great if you have, say, a background that has lots of different colors and things like that, and you want them to show through. Um, quality is up to you if you want to set it to low, medium, or high. I'm going to keep it at medium. I typically just set the distance to zero. And so now when we scrub our timeline, you can see just how realistic this shadow looks. And if for whatever reason you want to play around with the perspective of the shadow, it's easy to do. Just click on the symbol in this layer. Select the free transform tool and adjust as necessary. But you're not limited to just adding drop shadows for characters. Let's add a bevel to our character. So with the default settings, this is what the bevel looks like. But let's soften that a little bit. So I'm going to lower the strength to a value of around 29 or 30 percent. I'm also going to adjust the amount of blur. By adding blur, you can give your character or whatever resides in this layer a nice sense of depth. And again, if you want to make any kind of adjustments, just select a frame in this layer and make whatever adjustments you need. If you want, you can even change the colors of the shadows and the highlights. Another cool effect you can add, let's say you want to create an outline for your character. I'm going to select the glow effect. And so for this glow effect, I'm going to change the actual glow color to black because I want this character to have a black outline to it. And I'm going to increase the strength to about a thousand. And the blur, I'm going to set to about five. So that in combination with beveling and the shadow really adds a nice touch of dimension to our character. And to show you just one more cool effect, I'm going to select adjust color. And by adjusting some of these values for saturation and hue, we can completely change the look of our character. And those are just some of the things you can do using frame effects in Adobe Animate CC. Layer parenting is a cool new feature in Adobe Animate CC, and here's how easy it is. So here I have a character inside a graphic symbol. If I double click the symbol, you can see all of the layers and symbols that make up this character. All of the symbols have been distributed to layers, and we're pretty much ready to start layer parenting. One note before I get into the layer parenting is I have already set the center point for all these symbols. And what I mean is I select the symbol and then select the free transform tool. I have moved this center point from the center position, which is the default for the center point. And I've moved it to a more natural, anatomically correct location, uh, where 
body parts would normally and naturally hinge, right? So you can see the thigh has been hinged at the hip, and the lower leg has been hinged at the knee, and so forth. The upper arm is hinged at the shoulder, the forearm hinged at the elbow, and naturally the head hinged at the neck. So once that is all done, now we can start layer parenting. We need to show the parenting view. So here in the timeline, click this icon here. This is the show parenting view icon. Now the next thing to do is decide what is going to be the parent layer or the parent symbol. In this case, with this character, I want it to be the torso. So the first thing I want to do is you can see I have a symbol here that is acting as the pelvis for this character. The pelvis is going to be a child of the torso. So in order to parent layers together, all you need to do is click in here in the parenting view and drag from the child layer to the layer that you want the parent to be. So in this case, I'm dragging from the pelvis layer to the torso layer. Now you can see the layer parenting path take place. Now the next step is to parent the pelvis to the thigh. So let's click on the thigh layer and drag it to the pelvis. And working our way down this leg, let's select the lower leg and we want that to be a child of the thigh. So let's drag it to the thigh. And now you can see how this parenting is being visually represented here inside of the layer parenting view. The ankle will be a child of the lower leg and then the foot or the shoe is going to be a child of the ankle. If I now select the free transform tool and move it, let's say rotate it, all the child layers will go with it. Here I'm selecting the upper thigh and rotating it and all the child layers or symbols are actually responding correctly. And since the torso is a parent of the pelvis and the entire leg assembly, if we rotate that, you can see how that works. So let's finish the layer parenting for the entire character. So just like the leg, we treat the arms the same way. The upper arm becomes a child of the torso layer, the forearm becomes a child of the upper arm, and the hand becomes a child of the forearm. The neck layer becomes a child of the torso layer, and then the head layer becomes a child of the neck layer. In the event you, say, want to remove a parent bone, you can actually click inside the parent view on a specific layer and remove the parent. You can even change the parent by rolling over Change Parent and then selecting any one of the other layers. Now, with your character all set, ready to go, you can create additional keyframes in your timeline and then simply start animating. In this case, we're going to make this character walk. So as you can see, layer parenting is really a great new feature. It's a time saver. It makes animating characters and, and, and anything with that, that has a lot of different moving parts that need to be linked together um, a much easier task. So I hope you enjoy this new feature, layer parenting.